Minister of State for Finance, the North Bloc team defending the budget, saying that this is a pro-growth budget, this is a budget that's managed to judiciously balance fiscal constraints, fiscal headwinds with the need for growth. Uh, the Congress doesn't seem to think so. Uh, the Congress believes that this is just a housekeeping and accounting process that the government has undertaken. Exactly. I don't think it is uh, inspirational at all and it is going to accelerate growth or encourage investments. It is not going to lift the low investment sentiment and surprisingly this budget also has nothing which may encourage savings. People have missed this point. So investments we don't see going up. Savings have uh, not been uh, given any Philip. And in addition to that, the availability of funds will be an issue for investment purposes. I don't think that has been addressed. Because if you are banking entirely on, a, on the FDI, the flow of capital is very weak. And most of the corporates are in debt. And the capacity utilization is minimal, not optimal. So they will not be, by the existing players, uh, more investments and uh, addition of uh, capacities. So when we look All at right, the numbers uh, which have been made available hmm. by the government, both the investment hmm. rate... Yes, sir. Go yes. ahead, Mr. Sharma. Uh, are you talking to me? Yes. Specifically on the NREGS, because the big fear of the Congress party was that this government would dump the NREGS, but in fact they've allocated 38,500 crores to the NREGS. Can I, can I, no, can I, can I now answer your questions? First of all, the government is not obliging the farmers or the poor people of this country. Secondly, the Prime Minister and his government, they were wrong. They campaigned against the Mandrega, they castigated it. Prime Minister said that it is an epitome of UPA's failure. And now having realized after the rural distress that it was the right priority, we are happy that uh, there is a belated realization. But when they, they say that highest ever, there is marginal increase in what was being allocated earlier. We should have taken place in any case, considering the fact that two years we have had successive drought or floods in some parts of the country. But they, uh, nothing can compensate now what has been lost in the last two years when there were huge cuts imposed. Beyond that, if you look at the farm sector, yes, anything which enhances the agricultural growth is welcome and deserves support. But if you look at the past, so I'm not going to delve too much into the past, that yes, this government has gone in for a course correction, realizing that agriculture still sustains a large percentage of India's population, and therefore investment in agriculture and augmenting agricultural production is a must. But when you look at the, uh, another aspect for horticulture and pulses, it's a meagre cosmetic allocations. Uh, which is not adequate. We wish if the government had done more there. But other social sectors, there is hardly any increase in education, nominal increase in health. 
इफ यू लुक दे हैव डन अवे विद दी माध्यमिक शिक्षा अभियान कंप्लीटली दे हैव सिंस लास्ट ईयर हाफ दी एलोकेशन फॉर मिड डे मील स्कीम्स इट इज फिफ्टी फिफ्टी नाउ बिटवीन द गवर्नमेंट एंड द स्टेट नाउ यू हैव टू शीर इन लुक एट वट्स हैपनिंग इन इंडिया फोर स्टेट बजट्स हैव कम बिफोर द यूनियन बजट एंड the slack which is going to be taken if the central allocations were going to be reduced the state budgetary allocations were to increase because of the transfer but even a state like gujarat they have just gone to pay the debt or clear the debts using the increased central allocation after the 14th finance commission and not increased any allocation uh, for the social sector uh, schemes So Sharma, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but if I may ask you to put on your former Commerce Minister hat, sir, uh, and respond to the comment that's been made by your former colleague, Mr. Chidambaram, as well, and that is as far as the export performance is concerned. In fact, Mr. Chidambaram says that this government seems to have given up its fight on the export front because, with the exception of one line in paragraph 86, the government does not address the export picture at all. A quick comment from you, sir, on that. No, let me, let me. Well, first of all, uh, they uh, they are concealing more and revealing uh, less, and uh, being silent on exports. Where for the 14th consecutive month there is a straight fall, almost 18 percent has been the contraction. They cannot cite the global reasons. Even when there was global contraction, India's trade had expanded after post 2008-9. Now. we left at 320 billion dollar of merchandise exports going by the average increase of the previous years we should have been touching at least 450 billion this year but we'll finish below 270 now what does the finance minister have to say to that how do they propose to incentivize exports you uh, it is not only exports it is not only these numbers the other numbers are far more frightening there's the tens of thousands of jobs being lost in the exports manufacturing sector every month in the labor intensive sector every month so instead of job creation you have huge job losses which are taking place as you would have heard from uh, chidambaram uh, the this growth rate whatever they may claim is a flat growth even on a year on year basis there is hardly any growth if you go by the old methodology where is the growth there well mr sharma thank you as always for joining us and giving us your comments on what you make of the third budget presented by finance minister arun jaitley uh, you would have liked to see more you're disappointed with what the budget has put out there uh, but thank you sir as always for joining us here